So in this video, we're gonna talk about the JavaScript array map function. And the main purpose of using map is when you want to change an array of something, like in this case, we have an array of numbers defined here. When you want to change an array of something into a different array of something else, that's really the, the primary use case for using map. So let's take a look here. If we type out our numbers variable and then dot map, you can see it shows up in VS Code's IntelliSense here. And then we open up the parentheses. We get the function signature of map and we also get the uh, description that's written about it. So especially this part here, right? Calls a defined callback function on each element of an array, okay? And returns an array that contains the results. So the callback function that we pass, that's this first one here, we can see that it has three parameters to this callback function. There's a value parameter, an index, and an array. Now specifically, we're gonna be focusing on this value parameter because that's the actual thing. So in this case, since we're iterating over an array of numbers, it is a number. All right, so then let's write that. So we define our callback function. It accepts a number and then what do we want to do to this array of numbers? Well, let's say for instance that we wanted to multiply each of the, the numbers by two. So we could return the number and then multiply by two. And then when we save that into, let's say uh, numbers, how about times two? And then let's go take a look at our numbers times two. And if we, I'm gonna run it in node here, here are the numbers times two, zero, two, four, six, eight. They're all multiplied by two. Awesome. That's really the, the basics of map. It's normally you want to take an array and you want to change it. You want to map it, that's where the name comes from, into an array of something else. Now, you can do all sorts of other things here, right? Say, for example, we didn't want to simply multiply it by two. Say we wanted to uh, take it to the second power, right? We could do number times number, okay. And now we have the powers of two, or we could do that same thing through the math.power. So the power method of the math built-in object in JavaScript. And here using that same thing, right? This is again, VS Code's IntelliSense. Math.power takes the number that we're raising to a power. So the number here that we're, the base is number and we're raising it to the second power. So when we do that, we get it's the same thing, number times number. Now, one other common thing we'll do with map is when we're not necessarily changing mapping an array of numbers, but when we have more complex objects. So here I have the cast of Star Trek Strange New Worlds, which I just watched recently, which was very awesome. Uh, and so that simply comes from uh, here. Here we are on IMDB, right? And this is Star Trek Strange New Worlds. And all I did here was I grabbed the first eight of the top cast and we have the person's name as well as their character in the show. So let's do a little rearranging here so we can see things. Close that there. Now, so we could do a similar thing. So let's say instead of numbers, we want to do cast.map and our callback function and the parameters of our callback function. Remember the first parameter is the item in the array. So in this case, so here, right, these would be the, that would be the first parameter on each iteration. So it would be, we can call it a person. Okay. So let's say for some reason we needed to add the show. We needed to add a show property on each of these objects. So we need the objects to look like this. So star, star trek, strange new worlds. So we need each of these objects. So here, we want to do it here, and we want to do it here, and we want to do it here. I mean, yeah, you could go through and do that manually, but imagine your array is not 
eight items long. Imagine it's 800 or 800,000. So instead of doing that, what we could do is we map over the cast array and then we return a new object and we could do name and this would be person dot name and then character name. There we are. Person dot character name. And then here we will add in our show and Star Trek Strange New Worlds. And now let's save this to, let's say cast with show name. And then let's log out cast with show name. And you can see here in the log that we have our first element, right? There's our name, name, there's the character name. And you can see we have all of our show properties the show property, we added that to each of the objects. One very important thing about map is that it creates a new array, right? So it's as in you're mapping the, you're mapping the array to a new array. So this cast with show name, if we add some labels to these logs, and then Let's change this one to the original cast. So here, right, we're logging cast and then cast with show name. And then look what happens here, right? So this is our cast, the original array here, which is unmodified. We haven't changed it, right? It only has the two properties, the name and the character name property. And then the cast with show name, the new array we created, it's a different array, has the name, character name, and the show that we added. So that's an important thing with map. It creates a new array. The original array stays unmodified. Now, let's say for some reason that we didn't want to add this show property to every single person in our new mapped array. Let's say we only wanted to add it to, let's say index zero, and then one, two, three, four, five. So only to the elements at index zero and index five. Well, we can, we can do that because map also gives us access to, if we look at the second parameter here, we have the index in the original array. So on the first, iter the first time this callback function is called, index will be zero here. So we can check if index is zero and we totally arbitrarily decided that index is zero or five, they are not going to get this additional show property. So we could do something like this. We have an additional case. We have some conditional logic here that simply returns the existing element at that index, in our case, the existing object, if it's zero or five. So let's take a look. Open up our terminal here, run that, and you can see here, this is cast with show name. We have index zero, didn't get the show. And then one, two, three, four, five. Index five, didn't get the show. Now, an interesting thing about map is that if we look at our third parameter of our callback function, it is the array that we're iterating over. So if we add that as a parameter, and now here we have access to the array that we're iterating over. So we could say array at index. And if we needed to do that for some reason, if we needed to get access to this, we have it here. We can change things about this initial array, although I would be very careful about doing this because it is very easy to mess things up pretty royally here, or cause lots of issues. For example, let's say if we were being careless and we did something like that, Take a look at what happens. So here, okay, we have our we have our mapped array. Look what happened to our original array. We have now changed our original array that we mapped over to an array of the string hello. So yes, you do have access to the array that you're mapping over, but be careful about changing things, especially in, in that array when you're using map. Now, one thing you might find yourself doing is if you have an array of complex objects like this and you only need one particular property from each item in the array, let's say you needed the character's name. 
So what you could do is instead of returning a whole new object of that name, you could return the person dot character name. Then let's get rid of all this. Now here, notice that our mapped array is no longer going to be an object with properties. It's simply going to be this string field, whatever was in the character name field for each item. Take a look. So here is our original cast array, right? These are the objects. And then here is our cast with show name is actually now an incorrect variable name. So we'll say, we'll call it character names like that. Update that with the new names. There we are. So here, our new mapped array is character names. So this is a very common usage of the map function, mapping an array of some type. Here we have complex objects, and we're mapping it to an array of, in this case, strings. Now, one thing to be aware of is that if we go back to our example of treating indexes one and five separately, say we only wanted to return the character name for indexes one and five. Now, what's gonna happen here for, specifically for these other indexes where we're not returning anything? Let's take a look. We get undefined. Why do we get undefined? Well, most JavaScript functions, if you don't return anything, the default return value is undefined. And what map does is it will take whatever your return value is and it creates a new array with that return value. So in this case, for these two particular indices, zero and five, we're explicitly returning something. So there are the explicit string values we're returning. But for all of the other indices, we're not returning anything explicitly, which essentially means that we have an implicit return of essentially this, which is where the undefined comes from. So really the point of using map is to change an array of things. Like in this case, we have an array of people. So name and a character name, and we're mapping, changing them into a different array of something else. However, sometimes you'll see people use map primarily for side effects. And here's what I mean. So let's delete some of this code and delete that. And let's go back to our numbers array. Let's get rid of each of these parameters and we'll go back to the single parameter of number. Let's say also that we have a global state here. Let's call that sum and we'll set it equal to zero. And let's say the only thing we're doing in our map call is we're taking sum and then we are adding the number to that sum. And then later on here, we would do something with sum. We would use it in some way. This is an example of using map primarily for side effects. And this is generally considered a bad practice, an anti-pattern. And the main reason why is that map always returns a return value. It maps a thing to a new value. And so if you're not doing that with map, it seems counterintuitive and it's not really the point of why you would use map. For something like this, you might consider using a function like for each, which is really more what the for each function is designed for. So that would be, that's an important thing to remember about map. If you find yourself not using the return value, maybe consider if you should be using map in the first place. So that's it for a basic introduction to map. I hope that was helpful. Let me know in the comments. Make sure to subscribe, tell a friend, all that good stuff. Have a wonderful day, and I will see you next time. Bye.